on to tonight's film in the movie drone is Ken Russell's controversial account of the composer Tchaikovsky's tempestuous sexual and emotional life, introduced by Alex Cox. Ken Russell is, according to the conventional wisdom, the baddest boy of British cinema. It's fashionable among the critical and producerial elite to deride our Ken and treat him as a finished madman from a bygone age. This in spite of the fact that in just the last two or three years he's made at least four feature films. And in spite of the fact that any video shop you go into is bound to be a veritable trove of Russell films. The list of his important films is extremely long. The Devils, Tommy, Savage Messiah, Women in Love, The Boyfriend, Valentino, even his bad films, principally Altered States, have some very interesting stuff in them. And his recent work, in Salome's Last Dance and The Lair of the White Worm, shows no significant dimming of Russell's creative flair. It's not hard to say why Russell's pictures tend to goad the critics and the intelligentsia. For a start, he himself is a noted critic basher, having accosted a notable critic on live TV. In addition, he's somewhat self-indulgent. No recent Russell film can be complete without a fantasy sequence featuring crucified sheep and writhing naked nuns. But his worst crime, maybe, is that no matter how elevated his subject matter, his approach to it is always resolutely anti-intellectual. There is nothing Russell likes more than broad humor and hosts of people drinking and taking off their clothes. Tonight's film, The Music Lovers, is the life story of Tchaikovsky, Russell is very fond of biopics about composers and other artists. His early work for the BBC included dramatic biographies of Richard Strauss and Frederick Delius. Imagine how the music lovers would have been if, for example, David Putnam had made it. Long, reverential credit sequence, black screen. Credits go on and on. Music builds. More credits. Cut to a fabulous country house in the Ukraine. Cut to a hundred extras toiling in the fields. Cut to a butler pouring a glass of vodka. Cut to a shot of sunlight streaming through parted curtains onto a man at the piano, music builds, and so on, for the next three and a half hours. We're talking Oscar material. Our Ken will have none of this. His Tchaikovsky is a gay man married to a nymphomaniac, with a bit of music on the side. A lot of music, actually. It's great. It's really funny. Has a screenplay by South Bank supremo Melvin Bragg, great performances, particularly from Glenda Jackson as Mrs. Tchaikovsky, and from Richard Chamberlain, who appears to be really playing the piano in the concert scenes. I think it's this determination not to make a well-made film, but rather to make an entertaining madcap film which really catches your attention, that annoys the critics so. Your cultural elite like to believe that fellas like Tchaikovsky and Mazorgsky and Rimsky-Korsakov are their property. What Russell does is to attempt to make highbrow stuff less posh, and less exclusive. Sometimes he fails, as in his Nightmare on Elm Street version of the Byron Shelley story, Gothic. But more often he succeeds, as in Salome's Last Dance or in The Devils. If you haven't seen The Devils, you should try and get a copy on tape. They don't make films like it anymore, and it isn't going to show up on TV uncut any time in the next 5,000 years. But for tonight, The Music Lovers, set in Russia in the 1870s, shot in England in the 1970s, a biggish budget British film with balls. <laughs> <laughs> 